Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now yield five minutes to the gentleman from California, Mr. McClintock. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I thank very much the gentlelady for leading or for yielding. I rise in opposition to this rule and in opposition to the underlying bill. And to explain why, I'd like to walk through a little history and a little math. Let's begin with history and two very important dates, 1978 and 1839. In 1978, the Wall Street Journal carried this headline, Solar power seen meeting 20 percent of needs by 2000. Carter may seek outlay boost. Oddly, the same paper carried a headline in 2006, making the same promise, this time for all renewable fuels, only this time by 2025. But I digress. Billions of dollars were poured into research and development for solar technology. As a result of that, an entire solar industry solely supported by massive subsidies arose in order to grab those dollars. And what was the result of all of this plunder of taxpayers and rate payers? More than 30 years after that promise was made in 1978, solar power accounts for just 1 percent of electricity generation. That's not for lack of subsidies. It's because despite all of the billions of dollars of subsidies, the technology remains immensely inefficient and expensive. And that brings me to the second year, 1839. This is not a new technology. Photovoltaic electricity was first discovered by French physicist Alexander Edmond Becquerel in the year 1839. This technology has existed for 170 years. And in those 170 years of scientific discovery and progress, and despite billions of dollars of subsidies to the solar industry, we have yet to discover a more expensive way of producing electricity. When the state of California was squandering its wealth on subsidizing this industry a few years ago, I asked the California Energy Commission, well, what is the price range of all of the various forms of electricity generation that we can choose from? And here's what they reported. The cheapest form of electricity generation is hydroelectric. It ranges from a quarter of a cent to 2.7 cents per kilowatt hour. So the mid-range average is around 1.5 cents. Then comes nuclear power, mid-range around 1.7 cents. After that, coal, about 1.9 cents. Then wind at 4.6 cents and gas at 10.6 cents. And finally, we get to the most expensive way to produce electricity, solar, between a low of 13.5 cents and a high of 2.7 cents per kilowatt hour with a mid-range of about 28.1 cents. But it gets worse. In a day, a solid acre of state-of-the-art solar panels can produce 2.2 megawatts of electricity, assuming an average of five hours of peak sunlight. 2.2 megawatt hours per day. Now compare that to the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant that produces 49,000 megawatt hours of electricity each day. Now in order to duplicate that single nuclear power plant, it would require 22,000 acres of solid solar panels, 34 square miles of solid solar panels. By comparison, the Diablo Canyon power site sits on just one square mile. So this technology, after 170 years and countless billions of dollars of research and development, is roughly 17 times more expensive than nuclear power and consumes 32 times the land area of a comparable nuclear facility. But don't worry, say the proponents, we just need a few billion dollars more to become competitive. Well, I'm sorry, but we have heard that song before. I suppose hope springs eternal. For decades, the federal government and gullible states like California have kept the solar industry afloat, pumping billions of dollars into subsidized loans, uh, credits to consumers who buy solar panels, 
And of course, research and development, $166 million last year, $175 million this year by the Department of Energy alone. This is an industry that exists solely of the dole, by the dole, and for the dole. It is now clamoring for billions of dollars more. And if this rule is passed and the bill is taken up, they're going to get it. Gentlemen's time has expired. No, no, just uh, 30 seconds. Uh, the gentleman can have 30 more seconds. The gentleman is recognized for additional 30 seconds. If they get this rule and get this bill, they're going to get those billions of dollars more taken directly out of the shrinking bank accounts of American taxpayers. This is called the Solar Technology Roadmap Act of 2009. Well, you've heard of the bridge to nowhere. Uh, this is the roadmap that's going to get us there. I, Back his time. For what purpose, gentlemen? Colorado.